One of that trend flowers that you just bought have in common one of the most important cultures in history. What would be Anna Winter's analogy with the pharaohs of ancient Egypt? And if we compare the silhouette of the best known mouse in the world with those of the hieroglyphics, will we find similarities? And why is the style an essential feature in aesthetics and art? A style is a trend, a way of creating, being, or living. It usually contains a series of rules, conscious or not, that over time becomes customs or practices, and in art, helps define an artist. If we go back to its existence, I cannot think of any other ancient civilization with more rules and aesthetic longevity, like the Egyptians. The use of the profile in the paintings, the gold, symbol of wealth and status, associated with the sun and its worship to god Ra, the use and belief of semi-human deities because their art was sacred, the black eyeliner we now call makeup for protection and healing qualities, the importance of capturing stories and important events in its columns and walls. All of this set of elements generates a style that thanks to this, it is improbable that even without knowing anything of its history or art, you would not be able to recognize an Egyptian piece just by looking at its aesthetics. Ancient Egypt began as a set of small settlements near the longest river in the world, the Nile, because when it comes to survival, life becomes easier where water abounds, and little by little these small settlements began to grow, helping each other until they unify in what would be the longest Asian civilization in history, Egypt. Its duration was approximately 3,000 years. Think about it, after Christ our culture only had 2,018 years. Now imagine living all these years with the same way and manner of behavior as Egyptians did. Perhaps it's far easier to agree that if there is one word that defines this civilization, it's style. The ancient Egyptians had a set of strict artistic rules that were passed down from generation to generation, so no matter who the artist was, there would still be the same uniformity over the years, centuries, and in this case millennia. So, as Anna Winter decides which trend is approved for the following season, the first pharaohs and artists determine the set of characteristics that would define an entire civilization due to the divine power they believe possess. You're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. And it's bioexistence, the coexistence with other cultures in the same temporality and their influence one another, Egyptian art is recognizable thanks to its own unique character. No one can deny the recognition of an Egyptian sized silhouette. But why was the set of characteristics a chosen one? To understand the selection process, it's necessary to ask ourselves what is a good silhouette? A proper silhouette is defined by the clarity in which its form is understandable against its contrast. To illustrate a silhouette, I'm thinking of a well-known mouse. This famous mouse, whose name I will not say for a limited reason of the use of his name, writes an exhibition of their multi-millionaire company that I'm a fan and that I can use this image for educational purpose. It's a perfect example of a good silhouette. When they first started to create this character, one of the most outstanding features were his ears. However, at the time of rotating the head of the mouse in profile, this ear lost the recognized shape, and it was there where the creators made a decision. I have an idea! In spite of being anatomically incorrect, the ears of the mouse would move in their vertical axis every time the head was in profile, just so that the recognizable silhouette of the famous mouse of the happiest place on earth will never be lost. And although it is believed that the famous Rodin and his friends are the mentors of the use of the silhouette to improve visual aesthetics, the reality is that it comes from many millennia ago. The Egyptians choose in their art the best representation of each part of the body. Now, let's play. Of the three options, which of these silhouettes do you find explains better the outline of a human face? Of the three options, which one will you be sure is a human torso? Of the three options, which of this silhouette expresses with a greater understanding it's a human foot?
and finally of the three options which will you say with greater confidence is the silhouette of an eye? In few words, the Egyptians simply took the best representation of each part of the human body, animals or objects for their understanding and put it all together in what we know now as Asian Egyptian art, regardless of how anatomically correct it was. And this spell is repeated everywhere. Walls, columns, writing, sculptures, tombs, even in our contemporaneity we continue to refer to them. Egyptian art was strict and different, recognizable and inspiring. As Gromwich wrote in his book, The History of Art, all artists are students of the Egyptians. But why is style important in art or history? Simple, because style creates memorable objects, people and cultures. Nobody remembers the young and innocent Norma Jean Mortensen, but everyone remembers the iconic and sexy Marilyn Monroe. If I mention Charles Spencer and I show you this picture, maybe you'll think, Hmm, that's a handsome man, but in the end, it's still quite common. But if I show you this image, or just say Chaplin, your perception automatically changes to a set of predetermined characteristics that define a character. The same goes for hundreds of iconic characters, periods of times and cultures. Because in the end, style is the filtration of qualities that create something unique, recognizable and transcendent.